starting the clock. And again, I'm going to try a different quality of line with this one. And for this one, I'm going to use my left hand. See how it goes. And that could be, you know, I'm just adjusting to how I have my camera set up here. So why not? Let's go with left hand, blind contour drawing, and you'll immediately see the quality of the line completely change. I'm still at about 98% blind contour drawing. I do some of these lines to give myself a little, little roadmap into the figure where I would be coming back. But I do want, again, to focus, stay slow. Really, really connect. And it's, it's, it's amazing when you think about it. You could connect with that, not just the, the subject, but the negative space around it. When you feel that, you'll realize it, it'll be hard to do it any other way. And it's going to be one of the biggest, I think, foundations that will allow you to draw anything. Anything that occupies a space, um, it'll be hard for you to not know it anymore. So you'll always be aware whether you're doing it or not. And you'll see that it should be very helpful. So there's a great negative shape here. Negative space. Beginning to make relationships between elements, how they line up. A little awkward here with the camera next to me. I'm going to remind myself I've been going too fast, so go even slower. And go, go slower means look slower that means your hand follows goes slower really getting a sense of tracing the contour and one of the great tips that i can give i know i don't know if it makes sense when i say it but it should feel like you are literally putting the tip of the pencil or charcoal or pen right on the area that you are drawing and just tracing it. And you should begin to get a sensation of how it goes forward or back into space or curves or folds or stretches. And then immediately you see the response in your quality of line. So here I go a little, just a little bit into the figure. Never losing sense of your of your spot. Going into the figure. I, I'm getting a sense I did much better in this one. Just looked at the clock. We have a whole minute left. And not to rush. Don't want to rush it now. Did a great job working all the way around very slowly. Some of these lines, when rushed, will actually hurt it a lot. And that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And this was 
left-handed. Five minutes. Now, if you don't think you could do this left-handed, you're wrong. And if you're left-handed, you should be doing it right-handed at least once. It doesn't have to be today, but I highly, highly recommend. That's the next stage of this. You do this over and over, 30 seconds, one minute, five minute. Um, we've been doing it right-handed. Then you switch over to your left hand. And immediately you see the changes, especially with the reading of space. Because your left hand is controlled by your right brain. Right brain is what sees space. So immediately I see a quality, a difference in quality. And, and I, I really like it better. One more. And this is our final five minute. I'm going to go with charcoal. Back to the right hand. And this one. Let me start. I started here last time. So I'm going to start. And again, picking your spot is so crucial. Most of the time we want to start where it's easy to, to tell and see how far I can fit it. This time, let's see, I'm going to start here at the at the middle, where it would be the, the knuckle, the tip of the hand here, and see how that works out. I hardly see any contour here. little trickier we're seeing this figure kind of in perspective from a lower angle so you have to kind of get a sense of that too whatever's closer to you looks bigger whatever's further away looks smaller and that's part of how this proportion is going to be developed but very easy to simplify by going really slow. Still 98% catch yourself. Really observing there are elements and things I cannot make out looks like i guess piece of the scarf and i know the other one should be like the car mirror so again that's part of the observation begin to make relationships between proportion and realizing that your line Your line is your voice. You're, what you're seeing, you're telling us through your line. And then you realize your line, your voice. How is your voice? Is your voice nice, descriptive, patient, or is it energetic? and gestural and expressive and happy or dramatic. So all these qualities of line begin to, to pop up. You make them yours. And eventually that is the goal. We're, we're, anytime we look at one of your drawings, we will identify, oh my gosh, I know who did that. Just like we do with great masters. It is so easy. Even when they were influenced by others, you could tell what a Degas drawing looks like. And you could tell it apart from a Renoir or a Picasso. We all know what Da Vinci looks like. And easily, you could, you could easily, oh, I know who did that. It looks familiar. Okay, still a minute left, and I'm going to go into the figure and went all the way around. Hard to see here, so I'm just going to finish up some of these crossing juxtaposition elements here without making up information. But again, beginning to read negative space outside of it. So when I'm looking at this leg, 
shouldn't have said leg, but this element here, the edge of this becomes my negative space, which, oh, that's still something else from my subject. But you can begin to break it down and identify shapes within the shapes that help you simplify it more and more and more. Always, that's the biggest thing. Making it so simple, so simple, so easy that it looks like you're cheating. And some people might say, oh, well, it's not fair. That looks like it was cheating. And, well, it does take that extra amount of practice. Let's put this little element here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so that was our final five minute. And I did this one with charcoal.